Hi guys, welcome back. It's Gina, and I'm doing this mixed media. I called it art for obvious reasons. I thought it would be fun to put on. I have these broken um, brushes. I use this one for my um, liquid frisket, and it's just it's ruined now. So I cut off the end broke it off. Another brush that I've had for many, many years. I'm never going to use it again, so I thought I'd break it off too. And same with this one. I have so many of these. So, and this one is just too rough for me. I just don't like it. So, what I do with my old brushes and old ruler that broke off, I'm going to incorporate it with this art piece. I thought it'd be neat. So all I'm going to do is start tucking stuff in. You could do this before you do the flowers. This is just how my mind works. <laughs> Maybe put it over here. Hmm. So I'm going to put some E6000. I can get it out <laughs> all in the back of where I want to put in there and sometimes I would I would protect the person that you know for the art piece this side it seems like it's a little bit better so I'm gonna put this side out I don't like it that way I like it this way <laughs> Just tuck it right under. And then I'm going to grab my brushes and put some E6000 on it. I always use unconventional materials. I don't, I've always been like that. I like it. I like what I can, what will speak to me and what will work and I came into the art room this morning I was like hmm okay that work I like that idea and even though this has um, liquid frisket on it I think it it's a little bit more interesting that way Tuck in, tuck in. Okay, I'm gonna put it right there. And then the last one. Right in the middle. You can see that. Yeah, like that, like that. Maybe even mixed media is all about trying things and seeing if it works. I like that there. I think, let me see. Just some tucking again. You get a little bit of wiggle room with E6000. It doesn't dry right away, which I like. And I'm just going to break this in half a little bit there. Because I just want part of it to um, stick out. Like I said, it's just, it's all about layering. 
Do I like this here? Hmm. No, I don't actually. I think that's enough. We're getting ready for the Italian Irish Parade this weekend. It's really, it's one of my favorite parades in New Orleans. And if you guys know anything about New Orleans, they will um, throw beads at parades. Well, the Italian Irish Parade will throw potatoes, onions, um, all sorts of stuff, but the the piece de resistance is cabbage, big old um, heads of cabbage. It's it's quite a treat. I love it. Um, this is just just I want to put it over the whole thing, and I'm a blob, a little bit. You know, I don't want a whole lot on the art. I want to see, still see it, but have it go in the background. I'm just going to put this gesso over the whole entire art piece. You're like, those are beautiful flowers. What are you doing? Yeah, they are. And they're... This is what I want to do. <laughs> uh, my kids love, love this braid. They go running up to the um, the floats. Throw me a cabbage. <laughs> it's great. It's so much fun. It's, oh, I love it. I'm not sure if I have to work this weekend though, which would be horrible. <laughs> they have these block parties in the French Quarter, which is so much fun. They have a parade that they'll go to house to house and get jambalaya, um, give out produce. It's so much fun. I love it. And sometimes, you know, you don't really get to record because you're trying to catch all the produce. I will come home with literally three or four trash bags filled with um, produce, onions, and then we'll make, um, we'll go and buy some corned beef. And that's what we'll have. <laughs> we'll have cabbage soup. Have cabbage for the next five, six weeks. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I wish, uh, you know, and in New Orleans you can drink on the, um, on the streets. You can walk around with an open container. And... Everybody does. Everybody. That's what they do in the parades. Even. It's hilarious. And it's, it's the way of life down here. It's great. It's hilarious. It's so fun. Well, obviously the E6000 hasn't dried. So I'm just kind of blotting it. I'm going to pause the video so you guys won't have to watch me put this gesso on. <laughs> Um, I will come back after it's dry, okay? Thanks, guys. Okay, I'm back. It's, um, nice and dry. In some spots, it's just, it's a little wet. But overall, it's pretty good. Like the um, E6000 underneath here and underneath here is still wet. So... I like to um, do an initial wash of gesso and then do my first layer of sprays. Um, and then I'll let it sit for a little while in order for it to um, dry. And, you know, I can use the, the heat tool. Not a problem. I just much rather it to dry, air dry. So I'm going to use this Flat Fabio. This has, um, it still has the two colors, but it's not shimmery. And, um, this is Pink Ladies Pink. Yeah, I don't, I don't name them. <laughs> I like to do this as my initial wash. My main color. 
You need to shake it up really good. Make sure all the mica is off the bottom. And then I'm just going to spray it. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, I like to encourage it to drip down. I just like those, that look. I'm going to flip it over so I can get 3D of my initial wash. You don't have to like spray like a hundred times. I just, I like to use this. Sometimes I'll use the um, paints on the bottom, the wash. You're like, okay, that's enough of the pink already. <laughs> I'm just encouraging it to drip. Really like that look. Okay, so I'm going to put it down. And I'm going to look and see where I, I have it. I don't have enough color. Here, like up here. Okay, so you can still see the art. You can still see the textures of everything, which is great. You can still see that this is a ruler and these are my extra pieces. What I'm going to do, I'm going to shake this up. This is the Starburst. And this is two turned, and this is Hottie Patui Hot Pink. Like I said, I don't make the the names up. Okay. So with this one, I'm going to spray my flowers. And I'm going to spray the flowers over here. Again, you don't have to use that much. And I'm just encouraging it to drip. And a lot of people, when they encourage it to drip down, they will use the heat tool so it can stop. Me, I like that. I like that look where it's, like it's doing right here. I like that look. You can still see art. And I like how it's going into the cracks now. That's why I use the sprays. Okay, now I know I have it upside down. I did that on purpose. What I'm going to do is just to frame it a little bit. I'm going to use Mission Bells Brown. And sometimes I will take this stuff and I will put it in a clean bottle of the distress paints. I like the um, dauber lids or I would buy the extra dauber lids, lids on Lindy's stamp gain, um, the website. I like to be able to go in there and do it. You could also use a paintbrush to do so. I'm just gonna spray this very random but just to kind of highlight a little bit. This is the, remember, this is the first wash. I'm going to put more stuff on here. Okay, like I did before, I'm just going to encourage it to go down. As you can see, down at the bottom. And then I'm going to turn it this way so we can get this corner. And I'm going to encourage it to go down.
Okay, that's it for right now. I'm actually going to put a little bit of more pink, the Starburst spray, in the middle. And I'm just going to encourage it to drip a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of this in the middle, and then I'm going to let it dry for a couple hours, and I'll be back. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.